Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome back. Oh, hello. Today, today we are, uh, let me move this mic. Today we are finally going to be getting into some Rebel Clash. Yeah, one of the challenges that I was running into doing this, because I wanted to make some videos about this, uh, was how am I actually going to do deck profiles that I can then play with other people if we should all be social distancing and so I can't really, in good conscience, invite uh, my friends over. So, uh, so what I've actually done is I've uh, reached out to Luke Morsa. Uh, you probably know him from Celia's network. Uh, he makes awesome content. And uh, yeah, I, I reached out to him and I was like, do you want to make some videos with me online? Uh, so we're going to like do a setup where I have an overhead camera. He does his own thing on an overhead. We discord it, all that jazz. And then there's just some editing that goes on to make the, the battle videos. So anyways, um, that's just sort of a heads up on what's going to happen. This video in particular is a deck profile video for one of the decks that is going to be in those videos. I don't know if the deck in this video will be the battle from his channel or my channel yet. We'll figure that out. I'll put a link to that in the description, wherever that ends up being. Um, but yeah, definitely keep a lookout on mine and his channel, uh, both for, you know, the battle video, but also for the other deck list from the battle. We're each going to be doing a different deck list uh, from the battle. So if you want to see this and the other deck list, you got to check out his channel as well. Now let's just jump into it. The deck that I'm going to be covering today is um, a Melodic V uh, ADP deck list. So here you go. Let's, uh, there you go. ADP. Melodic V. I, I know that everybody's like thinking, okay, well, ADP has a partner in Zacian. Uh, what does Melodic have to offer? Well, let's uh, let's jump to the deck profile and then I'll walk you through. But I think this is another potential partner Pokemon uh, if you'd rather run a water deck with ADP. It's really water and, and metal. Those are the two decks you're probably going to run. All right. So, like I said, this is a Melodic V ADP deck profile. Um, yeah, so let's start off with the Melodic Vs. This is what we're going to be running. Let's move that GX marker. Uh, here you go. We're going to be running four Melodic Vs. Uh, melodic, Melodic, I don't know how to pronounce it. But uh, the benefit with this card uh, is that uh, its first attack... Let's see if I focus this up first attack for a water and two colorless. So you could technically use other energy. Um, it does 10 plus 50 times the amount of energy in your opponent's active Pokemon's retreat cost. Now, you might be familiar with this concept. You might be familiar with this concept from um, Eric, uh, Eric from Rare Candy, his Tangrowth deck that uh, saw a lot of success. Um, the benefit of this one um, is that A, it is not an evolution Pokemon, so you don't have to worry about that evolution. It does require three instead of one energy, which, you know, there's lots of ways around that, especially with Frostmoth. But 10 plus 50 times hits a much higher number with a smaller retreat cost component. Now, it does give up two prizes, but uh, I really like this and some other cards they're coming out with in Rebel Clash to make this archetype potentially viable. So we have four of these. I don't know if you need all four. You could maybe get away with three in this deck. I know a lot of Zacian ADPs only run three Zacian, so up to you. There's definitely room in the list that I'm showing you to tweak things, to make changes after you play with it and figure out how you want to actually put it together. The second Pokemon that we have in this deck, as you would imagine, is ADP. We have two ADPs in this deck for the obvious reason, but if you're not familiar, Altered Creation GX for a metal and water energy lets you do 30 more damage and take an extra prize for the rest of the game on any knockouts. Um, so, and then Ultimate Ray is obviously it does 150 or 180 after you've GXed uh, and attaches three of any type of energy to any of your Pokemon in any way you like. Um, also, that's a great way to power up a Melodic V on the bench. Um, and really what you're looking at here you think about the numbers, right? The average Pokemon is going to have two retreat costs. So already you're doing 110 base damage for three energy, which is not great, but add in Altered Creation and you're doing 140 base. Now, 
things like Absol and things like a new stadium called Galar Mine coming out can bump that up very quickly. If you get a two energy retreat cost that you've put a Galar Mine out, that's four. So all of a sudden now you're hitting 210. Add in an Absol, you're hitting 260. So all you need is two cards to go from 110 to 260. Add 30 on top of that and you're at 290. So five energy retreat is all you need for this plus this to knock out any tag team Pokemon basically that's gonna see play. That's just a rundown of why I think this is a potentially powerful archetype. It hits a lot harder than Zacian can. So the next Pokemon in this set, uh, this is definitely one. I saw a deck list come out yesterday. I was like t tinkering with this list for like the last two or three days. And I was like, I haven't seen anybody do this, but you know, Wasi posted a deck list from Japan. Uh, that did not run a Frostmoth line. Now, I do have a 2-2 count of Frostmoth in here for one reason. People are going to be looking to blow up ADPs on turn two or whatever before you can get off Ultimate Ray, not just because of this deck, but because of Zacian ADP, right? And Zacian ADP has a comeback card in Metal Saucer. I think if you do not have another energy acceleration in a deck like this, you basically allow yourself to be O-code on the ADP and then you just lose the game because it takes too long to power anything up. That is why I've included the Frostmoth line. I think it is a safeguard, basically, in the same way that a Metal Saucer is a safeguard. So we have a 2-2 line of Frostmoth, which allows you to attach water energy to your benched Pokemon, as many as you like during your turn. Then we've got two Absols. Now you could include more in here. I think two is all right. Um, really, you probably are only ever gonna have one maximum two on your bench at a time. Adding more in just makes you more consistent in finding those Absols, so that might be worth it. Uh, but right now I have two, something you can certainly play with. Then we got two of the resetting whole Marsh Shadows. The reason for this is, uh, yeah, you want your uh, stadiums to actually hit the board and be workable. Uh, so if there's a chaotic swell out there, that helps the chaotic swell get off the field and then you play down a stadium of your choice. And then finally, no deck would probably be complete without a Dene. So that is the Pokemon lineup. We've got four Melodic Vs, two ADPs, a Frostmoth line, Absol, Marshadow, and Dene. There's a lot of room here, I think, to add in a couple of other Pokemon. I don't know what those would be potentially. Um, you could even honestly think about adding Zacians into this list and just splitting your water count with metal saucers, just running a one, one line of Frostmoth. Um, yeah, I think this deck could go a whole lot of directions, but this is a baseline really of where we're starting. So now let's jump over to the supporter line. And uh, I think with a lot of Frostmoth based decks, the idea is you want to see water energy quickly. And this deck is no exception. You want to see a lot of cards throughout your turns. So we are running four of Professor's Research, which lets you discard your hand and draw seven. Now, another card that we're running a couple of in this deck, um, you could potentially run more. I have two. I think two is probably fine, especially with the next supporter you'll see after this. But we have the new Bosses Order or Bosses Command, however you want to decide that translation runs. Uh, basically what it does is it allows you to switch your opponent's active Pokemon with one of their benched. This is an awesome supporter. If you're familiar with older formats, uh, I believe this is uh, what people say is Lysander. I didn't used to play back then, but an amazing supporter card that basically is like, bring whatever Pokemon you wanna knock out up. Also, I should point out in this deck where you are increasing your opponent's active retreat cost, it's a good card to also just stall your opponent if you can't take a knockout for some reason. And then the last supporter we have in deck is probably one you don't see too often, but I think makes a lot of sense in this deck. We have one Lusamine. Now Lusamine you could use for both your supporters, whether it's Boss's Orders or Professor's Research, or your stadiums that might get bumped throughout the game. So Lusamine could potentially give you six Galar Mines. So that brings me to this next card, we're gonna get to Stadium. Stadiums are what really make this deck work. We have four Galar Mines, Galarian Mines. I don't know exactly which one it is, but four Galar Mines, uh, and that card allows you, and not allows you, what it does is it says both active Pokemon, yours and your opponents, in, 
uh, retreat cost is increased by two. Now, obviously, that's amazing. It means that Jirachis with the skateboards are basically pointless. No one's going to attach two, two energy to an active Jirachi just to retreat it. Um, it even makes things like Air Balloon not useful um, because if they have you know, an air balloon on a Pokemon that has any amount of retreat cost, then all of a sudden they've, they have to get rid of energy to retreat it. Um, so that's also really good for that. It's also just great uh, for um, doing more damage. That's really the point of it, right? The more retreat cost you can make on your opponent, um, the uh, more damage you're going to, to hit for. Now, another thing I want to point out about Melodic, which uh, I don't want to overlook, I did on the first pass, its first attack is the attack that matters most for us, but its second attack is actually really interesting. So I'm gonna see how this goes in testing. Its second attack for four energy, one water, three colorless, does 150, and the opponent's active Pokemon is now asleep. Now, why that is really interesting is you could be in a situation where you don't think your opponent can retreat, doesn't have a switch in hand potentially, uh, but you don't want them to be able to take a knockout on the following turn. You could roll the dice and say, if I can't get an, a one-hit KO, I'll at least put the opponent's Pokemon to sleep. If I do that, then they have to have a switch to switch. And they probably have to have a double switch, honestly. Switch, switch, because they won't be able to retreat with anything if you have a mine out and they don't have a replacement stadium. So another actually really good attack that I don't think is uh, useful to overlook. Then we have one other stadium. We have a power plant. Uh, the power plant in this deck is for Zera Aura. Very specifically, Zera Aura means any Pokemon with a electric energy uh, attached to them have no retreat cost, not zero, no retreat cost, which means you would be doing 10 damage. Zera Aura literally just breaks this deck. So I'm running power plant. I'm also running Lusamine because if I'm in that matchup, I can go get my power plant back potentially. Um, that said, it could still be a tough matchup, no matter how you, you know, slice it, so to speak. Um, all right. So the next cards we are going to get to, uh, let's see here, are going to be your Pokemon search cards, right? We have, as you would imagine in any deck these days, we have four quick balls and then we have three Pokemon communication. There's a decent amount of Pokemon in this deck. Communication is probably the best way to go find them. You could maybe put a Mysterious Treasure or two in here for the Marshadows. Wouldn't be bad. Uh, but that's what I have for now. So just see how it plays, honestly. That, that's where I'm at. I'm going to see how it plays. So that is Pokemon Search. Moving on now. Obviously, if you are going to have um, a huge retreat cost on all of your Pokemon, you can't rely on retreating. So we have the full count of Switch four um yeah so that is critical <laughs> um outside of that we don't really have another pivot pokemon that's i think the one failing of this deck is you don't have a pivot and i don't know what the best way to change that would be maybe you run your own zero aura you run some aurora energies rainbow energies that way um, you get the benefit of having zero retreat cost essentially that could be an option Otherwise, though, not having a pivot Pokemon is definitely this deck's one or one of this deck's weaknesses, I would say. So just something to keep in mind. Now, we are running two different types of energy. Uh, the benefit, though, is we have a lot of ways to find energy now. So the first card we're going to talk about is this water bucket card. We're running two of those. I don't think we need more for this deck. Uh, those allow you to get two water energy from your deck and put them into your hand. Pretty straightforward. Works great with Frostmoth. Um, also helps power up ADP. Yeah, just a great card in this deck. The next card we have is Energy Spinner. I really have been digging the Energy Spinner build of ADP Zacian. Uh, so using this as a way to find your metal energy instead of your water. Uh, so two Energy Spinners to help you find that metal energy. And then finally, two Energy Retrievals. This is largely because we're not playing a Ranguru in this deck. Um, and we are playing a four count of Professor's Research meaning our odds of ditching some of our energy is probably high. So let's leave some energy retrieval in the deck so that we can actually go find something. Now, in terms of tools, uh, 
this is where you could maybe get smart, cheeky, whatever, but I have right now two big charms in this deck. Um, and you can put those on either ADP or Melodic V. Really depends on the matchup. What is your opponent going to be dishing out from a damage perspective? Um, and how does the math sort of make sense on that? Uh, personally, you probably want to get one on your ADP just to make it as tanky as possible. Uh, but otherwise, uh, yeah. Hopefully uh, that adjusted the brightness a little bit. Now, in terms of other cards, we have two Tool Scrappers. Now, you could try to get away with just playing one Tool Scrapper. Personally, I think you want to find them as soon as you can because you need to get escape boards, you need to get air balloons. You can even get big charms and other stuff out of the way if you need. Um, but I like two Tool Scrappers in here just to make it as difficult for your opponent to retreat things as well as making it as beneficial to you to attack into them. That's really for air balloons and um, escape boards. And finally, we have one reset stamp because you got to have some hand disruption in a deck, right? Uh, this is the only way we're disrupting our opponent's hand. Uh, and yeah, that's what we're going to be doing is one reset stamp. Maybe Marnies would work in this deck uh, to lower your opponent's hand count so that they don't find switches. We'll see. That might be a better way or just to sprinkle in a few Marnies. But this is what I'm running with right, right now just to see, can I see enough cards to make this deck consistent? And finally, let's get over to the energy. We have four, eight water energy and three metal energy. Uh, yeah, I think that energy count, it feels about right. Um, given that you only need three energy for Melodic V's main attack, uh, you're probably not gonna be powering up more than two of those in a game. Uh, you might power up three if you need some pivots, but um, the fact that it also can take metal energy, you could increase your metal energy count, decrease your water by one or two, and that way you uh, maybe don't even need the energy spinners. You think you're probably just going to draw into it. But uh, yeah, that's the energy count thus far. So as you can see, it's a pretty straightforward Melodic V ADP deck. Uh, definitely want to see what other attackers might come into this deck, how it actually fares against a format that maybe has some playable VMAXs. Uh, yeah, so that's the deck for now. Thank you all for watching. Uh, as I said at the beginning, if you wanna see this deck in action, um, check the links in the description. By the time that the other video comes out, the matchup video, I will have a link to that matchup in the description as well as to the other deck that this is going to be playing against in the description. I feel like that makes sense. Uh, might be on my channel, might be on Celio's network. So definitely go check Celio's network out uh, if you want to make sure you see it when it comes out. But that's going to do it for me. Uh, thanks to everybody for watching and I will catch you in, uh, in a future video. Carpe awesome.